Good afternoon, board members. It's 4.30, so it's time to begin our meeting. Uh, we do have a quorum. All of our board members are, are present, and so I call this meeting of the Granville County Board of Education for a work session to order. I'd like to ask Ms. LeBrick if you'll offer our invocation. Yes. Uh, bow our heads. Gracious God, we thank you for health and well-being, as well as this opportunity to serve our community. We ask for your wisdom and guidance as we keep what is best for the students and of this community at the forefront of our thoughts and actions. Please help us to have clear and open minds as we strive to move forward in, the di in this difficult and complicated work with which we are tasked. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ms. Williams, will you offer our Pledge of Allegiance? Everybody will stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you so much again for being here this afternoon. Uh, today is a, con a uh, time for us to have discussion related around consolidation. Uh, this is culminating some of the work that we've done over the past two years. Uh, this comes after our public hearing that was at South Granville the other night. Uh, board members that were there to, uh, present to hear those comments by the public. And so originally I had asked the staff uh, to be prepared to share a timeline on how the consolidation would uh, go. Uh, now that we had made that motion and moved forward, um, but what I would like to do with the board's permission, I would like a point of personal privilege. I'd like to ask our vice chairman if he can take over for my position for just a few moments. All right. Mr. Chairman, um, at this time, I would like to offer a motion and that motion being this, and if I have a second, I would like to speak to it. I would like to rescind the motion from November 1st for the closure of Granville Central High School and the movement of South Granville High School to that location and the movement of Holly. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Williams. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to speak to that. Okay. Um, originally, I was the one that made the motion for us to, to move forward with that closure. And after listening and hearing the community over the past several weeks, not just Tuesday night, uh, but through countless emails that I have read everyone that has been sent to the board, and that through the time of us discussing with our, uh, within ourselves and then hearing from our community, I just want the community to know that we listened to them and that we heard that the community was not behind this solution. They wanted us to go back to the drawing board and so at this time, what I would like to ask that if this motion passes, that we as a board commit to the fact of that we would move forward to figure out a solution for our community, knowing the challenges that we need to face with our budget, with our schools that are not at capacity, but also with the fact that we still need to keep children at the forefront and that we still need to honor the wishes of our community as elected officials but also with the fact of making sure that as we make these changes, that we really take a hard look at, again, why we're doing what we're doing, how we accomplish that goal, and what it will do to affect the future of Granville County Public Schools. And so with that, I would like to add my support that we move forward with this, with the thoughts of after, if this passes, that we as a board uh, look at a plan in how that can be workable, I know that there has been a, a plan that Ms. LeBrecht has shared with us uh, that she's worked on that kind of came out of some of our earlier conversations. And I would be very open to, it, to for us utilizing that as a skeleton to be able to make some decisions and work as a team to come out of here today with at least some sort of guiding plan on how we would do this. Uh, thank you very much. Do we have any other comments? Anyone? I would just like to add a little and to Mr. Richardson, thank you so much for that motion uh, and it has been second and the things that you just mentioned, you know, it's, it's definitely uh, top notch with me. You know, I have been definitely reviewing and my conscience and the mind of everything of the 39 speakers we heard uh, the other night 
I made a comment for each and every one, so if you want to check my paper, I have 39 comments there. <laughs> uh, but uh, more importantly, things that I heard repeated by the different presenters. You know, this is a tough decision. Uh, I'm just rolling in on my first year on this board, but you all been rolling with this for the last five or 10 years. And you know, we're still out there, but we still, and what you said over and over again, that we have to put the best interests of our students first. Now, you know, I don't want to say, when we say the students, we mean the students. From K through 12, the students. From District 1 to District 5, District 6, whatever, the <laughs> students. I don't want to, you know, the parents, Amen. you know, you have parents say, you know, my child, my child, my child, and we know that still, the students, everyone, everyone, I'm on the equity task force, everyone, so as we rethink this again, we need to do it positively. And yes, I know about the plan. I, you would know, but we, I'm not gonna take off that much time. But we're here to do the right thing. But I say we have all the stakeholders at the table. And I don't mean just BOC, BOE, a principal up here or there. The stakeholders, parents, grandparents, you spoke. You told us what you felt about your community. And all I ask is parents, grandparents, everyone, all stakeholders, let's come to the table. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Could I just say one yes, sir? small thing? I, first of all, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Richardson rescinding his motion. I think it's going to be better for the community at large that, we, that he did that. Uh, and and uh, of course, we need to put that behind us and think about moving forward and uh, think about doing it in some kind of a timely fashion. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Any, uh, Ms. Williams? I was really struck by what the Mr. Moss said, Daryl Moss, about finding a new way. And also that our children are not just an expense, they are an investment in our future and their future. So thank you for the motion, Mr. Richardson. Okay. I, I would also like to say thank you for that motion, Mr. Richardson, and also like to thank um, all the citizens who sent emails and made phone calls and actually offered um, some well thought out solutions and ideas that they offered us to say, have you thought of trying it this way or we would be open to trying it this way. So uh, I really appreciate that. That makes, that makes a, a huge difference uh, as you're trying to think through this. So um, I thank those out there who are listening who sent in those positives. Okay. Solutions. Thank you. Are you ready to vote? Can I make one yes, more statement before we vote? You may. Sorry. I just, I, I thank all of our board members for, for their comments. One thing I need to say directly to us and the public is now that we have had this wake up call, it is time to come to the table awake and alert to be able to make decisions. One thing I realized in this is nobody cares until it affects them. Well, this has affected all of us the entire time. <laughs> and we just kind of slept through it. And so as a community, as a board of education, as our board of commissioners, that this is not something that now we vote on and we're done with. As Mr. P said, there needs to be a workable plan in the near future because we have children in front of us right now that we're educating. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll, uh, can you read the motion again? Um. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed uh, passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Richard. <laughs> Mr. Richard, if I could say one thing. Yes, sir. We, um, the thing that struck me through all of this with South Gramble was, is we have a lot more support for our schools than sometimes we think. And um, we need to ask those people who turned out to our uh, session to be willing to fight with us 
as we work on our funding and that kind of thing. If the commissioners were a part of what happened the other night uh, around funding, I think we could make some real progress. The way we're doing it now is not going to change anything because they see it all the way. So bottom line is, thank goodness <coughs> there's that level of support. But show up when we need you in the spring. Thank you. All right. All right, board members, so at this point now uh, begins the hard work. And so we need to uh, uh, go ahead and discuss kind of the framework or, or the options. Um, Ms. Lebrecht, I believe you have something you'd like to present tonight. Yes, I do. Um, so if we want to pull up, thank you. So what I've come up with, um, I've gone back over through a lot of our discussions, different proposals that have been thrown out, um, and kind of come up with what I think would be a very good temporary solution. And I use the word temporary in big, bold letters um, because there are a lot of things happening in our community that we just simply don't know where we're going to end up at the end of it all. Right? We have Saguasa that we have to deal with, and that is supposedly coming to a head at, in about three years or so. We also have Apple that is coming. And whether people want to realize it or not, that is going to impact us. Um, and then we also, you know, have the East End connector that will be completed in spring of 2021, uh, uh, 22, excuse me. So those are three very large items that are going to be impacting us directly. And so with that, um, I want to offer up this temporary solution. So if we can go to the next slide. Great. So in the elementary realm, I would like I think it would be smart for us to move the sixth graders into um, all of the elementary schools across the entire county, that's northern and southern end. And what that does is that helps to alleviate some of our capacity issues that we have been concerned about. Um, and then we would also then obviously talk about intramural sports um, and something to accommodate those sixth graders who have been accustomed to, you, to being able to have sports at their access. Um, and with, with us rolling K-6 throughout the entire community, we would be able to, um, you know, have sixth grade sports amongst even just our county, which would be special. Um, so then it takes us to middle school. And with all of the sixth graders in the elementary schools, that means that we have um, Butner STEM Middle and GC Holly Middle, specifically down here in the southern end. Um, with the ability to move just those seventh and eighth graders into Butner STEM Middle School. And again, this is, I am aware that this, is, this will be a long trek for people who live where I live, all the way in the southeastern corner, but this is just something temporary until we can figure out. Because my biggest concern with our middle school piece is that we have been talking about where to put a middle school. We've been talking about putting it, um, you know, there have been people that have talked about putting it at um, Creedmoor Elementary. There are people that have talked about putting it at Tar River area. And what we simply don't know in the next three to five years, we know that growth is coming, but we don't know exactly where that is going to be. That could be on the western end. That could be on the eastern end. That could be somewhere just completely all across the southern end. We really just have no idea. And to put all of our apples in one location seems a little... Um, you know, putting the cart before the horse, <laughs> if you will. So, um, so with putting uh, the seventh and eighth graders in GC Holly into Butner STEM Middle School, we do also continue to have room for some growth um, as well. And then that takes us into our high school aspect. Um, and so what I am proposing here is that we leave the three high schools intact and we make Granville Central High School an enrichment hub. And what I mean by that is that we can um, take courses that would be difficult to offer to all three schools separately, not necessarily CTE. CTEs can remain in the locations that they are currently, which is why we have a school choice program, right? But other things that maybe aren't available, um, other electives, advanced courses, that kind of thing. And what we can do is potentially shuttle um, or use a, um, a, a video conferencing equipment um, platform to be able to allow students that are at all three high schools to come together either virtually or physically 
and take these courses so that we aren't having to have a whole bunch of teachers that are only teaching to one or two students. Um, so that is that piece. And then um, if you want to go ahead and go to the next slide, great. So with that, um, what I have come up with then is also establishing a plan. Something that we heard about a lot from our community this week is that they are concerned that we come up with things and ideas, which are all wonderful, but what does that look like long term? So here we have, in a three to five years, we can evaluate the growth in the county. Um, at that time, after the three to five year time frame, and as, as things continue to grow, we can um, adjust that as well, the this timeline, but just to give a, a bullet point. Um, if sufficient growth has not occurred, which means that schools remain at their current capacity, we have experienced no growth, you know, everything is still operating, you know, where they currently are, um, we can at that point choose to consolidate to two high schools and move um, GC Holly to the third high school campus. Or we can choose another viable alternative at that time. Um, however, if sufficient growth has occurred, meaning that high school enrollments are too large to consolidate into two high schools, and Butner STEM Middle School is also needing expansion in the seventh and eighth grades, then we, can, we have a various number of options to choose from. First of all, we could choose to build a new middle school um, on the land owned next to Tar River Elementary School if we deem that growth has occurred on that part of the, of the uh, county. Um, or we can also choose to build a new middle school on GC Holly land, you know, um, if we feel that that location is a better alternative. Or we can also choose to convert another elementary school to the middle school if capacity allows. And also bearing in mind that construction does typically take about two to three years. Um, so, you know, then that pushes us into about the five year, five year time. So now, in five years, um, I wanted to discuss about how we can use the GC Holly land. And um, so some things that we had discussed previously, um, if we decided not to build a, um, a new middle school on the GC Holly land, we could create a pre-K center there, which that would be a location in the southern center on the GC Holly campus, but also bearing in mind that pre-K center would be very, very viable option for the northern end of the county. And so um, coming up with another alternative, like another location for that also in the northern end, I think would be very beneficial. Um, the other thing we can do with the Holly land is we can also create housing for teachers to help with retention and recruitment. Um, and so this one could be in the GC Holly campus and then also another location to create an equivalent in the northern end. Again, keeping all of that equity in mind. And then looking into updating and upgrading sporting facilities on the GC Holly campus for community use and rental. This is one area where I feel like uh, the southern part of the county is really lacking in comparison to the northern end. Um, we really don't have much in the way of parks, recreational, um, soccer fields, tennis courts, any of that stuff for kids down in this end. And unfortunately, students are forced to, you know, who live down here, are forced to have to go and defer to Franklin and Wake counties for the, their sporting things. And that's really hard, especially, you know, whenever you live in Granville and you want to support Granville and then you're, you can't, you just can't do it in the ways you'd like to. All right, so then moving out to a 10-year plan, making the best use of what we have. So if Creedmoor Elementary, I'm just throwing this out there because it was discussed many times over the past couple of weeks, if Creedmoor Elementary was closed and used to, ex we could use that because um, another thing that we had discussed for using Granville Central's campus is because of the land and because of the amount of space available. Um, but being that Creedmoor Elementary is located where it is and there is that greenway in between the two, um, we could use that land to continue to expand South Granville's um, sporting athletics and that sort of thing. Um, but the other thing, too, to take into consideration, some ideas that were really kind of interesting and, and something that would be kind of fun to, to dream about would be what if, um, because South Granville is so well known for their arts, what if we decided to build a performing arts center where um, Creedmoor Elementary currently exists? And we can use that art program for our own personal use, for our district-wide use, for rental within the community. I mean, it's really cool. Um, so the other thing then is um, uh, if we have several then options, 
again, with Creedmoor or for unused buildings in general. Um, so a fire department, if you decide that you needed to demolish a building, you can go to your, just as an example, um, not that I'm saying we need to do that, but um, if you were to go that route, you can go to your fire department and say, hey, would you be willing to use this as a training exercise and you can burn down the building. So that's something that we can use <laughs> to benefit, again, um, the community. However, the other thing that I thought would be really interesting is, you know, what if we were to use some of our unused buildings, for example, while we're not necessarily um, using the buildings on Holly Land and we don't really know what to do with them as of yet, um, offering them up to our law enforcement and be ha allowing them to use those as training facilities for SROs in case of school emergencies and drills and that sort of thing. Um, and then the other thing that we really need to do is we need to team up with our county commissioners going forward and, in, and come up with an enhancement plan for all of our campuses across the entire district. Because why have we gotten into this situation? And, in, you know, it's... It's because there hasn't been, I don't think, a very necessarily good relationship between the two boards, and I think we really need to work on that. Um, so it would be very beneficial for us to be able to work with them and say, okay, these are the schools that we feel really need a facelift. What is your timeline? Where can we come to a middle ground to really make sure that we don't end up in this position with any of our schools again in the future, feeling like we're having to put a ton of money all at once? Um, and then the last thing that I thought would be really interesting is if we took our media centers, which seem somewhat under, underutilized, and put in mini museums. And by that, I mean we have a very rich history of schools, of community, and um, Holly being one, Joe Toller, I mean there are just such, such amazing things, and historical, and Mary Potter as well, such amazing histories about these schools. And I think it would be really great to be able to put that into our media centers so that the kids that are attending schools can go and see that information for themselves and be able to use that as um, just learning experiences. I mean, you know, you revel in, in where you came from, right? So, and we learned about, a lot about that through um, South Granville High School um, and, and listening to all those families. Okay. so. That being said, what is required in order to make this plan move forward? So, ironically, there has not been an official closure study just done on GC Holly Middle School, which means that we would need to take action on just doing that, which would push our timeline out one approximately one month, right? Because that seems to be about how long it takes for us to get a closure study together, public hearing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then one other thing that I just wanted to kind of drive some of the, the points home that I've made is I actually came up with an um, Apple impact comparison chart. And this I came up with this morning, so you guys actually haven't had a chance to see this yet. Um, but we've been hearing a lot about Apple is coming to Raleigh, Apple's coming to Raleigh. And we don't really know, you know, we live 26-ish miles away from where that campus is going to be located, how much are we actually going to be impacted by that? And there are a lot of people that speculate we're not going to be impacted, and there are people that think, oh my gosh, it's going to be so much. So what I've done is I've actually found and did a little research around Austin, Texas. Um, Liberty Hill, Texas is located 23 miles outside of the Apple Incorporated um, facility in Austin. And so there on the left, you can see Creedmoor, North Carolina, and it goes through their demographics. The interesting thing that I would like to point out is that um, in the very center picture underneath Liberty Hill, Texas, in 2015, that is when um, it was informed, the public was informed that Apple was coming to Austin. And at that point, in that year, they had 32% growth. Okay, and they have continued to see growth every single year since, where prior to that, they were lucky if they saw maybe 2%, except for one random year. All right, so that um, actually ends up being growth since 2010, so about 10 years, that's been 308% of growth. Okay, so the other thing that I wanna point out then is that 
that's great, we're seeing that kind of growth. But what does that really mean for us as a school district? I mean, those could be older communities for all we know. Um, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to point, pull up what the age demographic was back in 2014. However, if you look at our um, median age charts, on the left-hand side by Creedmoor, you'll notice the male and female. In the, first, uh, in the pink and the blue bars, the first one is zero to five, all the way at the bottom of the, there you go. Um, that is the zero to five age range. So then we have um, five, the next three bars up, that is five to the ages of 18. So those are all school age children. And so you can see there um, in both the male and female, that is about 15% of, of Creedmoor's population. Now I've just used Creedmoor City as an example because I felt like that was comparing apples to apples. Um, but if you go over to Liberty Hill population, we can see that regardless of when this was now, at this point in time, their um, age, school-aged children, it's actually 25% of their population. So I feel like regardless of what kind of population increase we're going to see, it's probably going to be about an, a 10% increase at least in our school-aged children. Um, so anyway, so those were just some interesting things that I really wanted to point out that we could potentially be looking at, which is why I feel like this temporary approach is really something that we need to go with so that um, we don't find ourselves five years down the road going, geez, we really didn't have that information that we needed at the time we made, made concrete decisions, and now we have to backtrack. So that concludes my study. Very good. Thank you, Ms. LeBrecht. Yes. Definitely informed study. At this point, board members, do um, I, I want some direction from you. Do you want to discuss this and make a motion from, or make some direction from that? Or are you ready to put something on the floor? Um, I mean, if nobody else wants to discuss anything, I, I would be willing to make a motion that we proceed with the closure study of Holly with the intent to move forward with our temporary solution. Yes, dear, um, Ms. LeBrecht, I want to make sure I fully understand exactly, and let, by the way, thank you so much for this because this is a starting point, okay? It definitely is a starting point for us to start laying out a plan of action to get us from A to B to where we need to get to. So this is great. I really appreciate you doing that for us. Now, your last slide that says a study, a closure of C.G. Holly is in, in respect of, and I know we looked at Holly before, but uh, I guess we didn't, when you say a closure of it, what do you mean as far as? So right now what we've done, all of our closure studies have been surrounding Holly and really moving it to another campus. And so what this does is this is actually a full-on closure of GC Holly. Not to say that five years down the road, we may open a new middle school and decide to name it GC Holly Middle School if the growth occurs that like we think it may. But this is just a closure study of GC Holly Middle School moving those students and actually closing the campus um, okay. to move uh, forward. I have a question. Yeah. And it has to do with the idea of closure rather than moving the kids from one school to another. Because if we decide to move the students from G.C. Hawley to another school and possibly name it G.C. Hawley, I don't know that, but is that, does that mean the same thing as closure? So that's, that's a good question. Um, I see you looking to me. Can you just speak to your mic? Um, <clears throat> I think the answer is yes. In, so as she said previously, you studied moving Holly, which I wouldn't see as a closure because you, at the end you have the same number of middle schools you started with. But in this plan, you're gonna have one less middle school than you started with. And so that is a closure of Holly. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think we need to decide what we're gonna do with the plan. It doesn't, I will say it doesn't mean anything about what happens to the name Holly. Right. You can rename any of your buildings at any time. So I have a question, and maybe this is for executive staff. Um, can you pause a school? Like, like not, have a school but leave it empty? Yeah, because we, we are saying this is a temporary possibility that we're just moving those students over to another school. 
Um, that's a new one for me. And so the answer is, <laughs> I've, I don't know. I suppose we could look into what the implications would be of having a school number that's empty um, and whether that's a thing that you can do. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, we know that to be assigned a school number, you need 100 students. And so I've never looked into whether you would lose your school number if you didn't have 100 students. I don't know. Dr. McLean's looking at me. Do you know? Right. Right. So yeah. So then I, I would say then no. Then we couldn't do that. We we can certainly look into it, but I think we should proceed. If if you want to proceed with some speed, you should go ahead and proceed with a study, and then if you find you don't Need it. want to do that, you don't have to do it. Okay. Did that answer your question? Kind of. Okay. Because, well, the reason I say that is because you know, I have uh, several questions about uh, Ms. LeVerk's uh, plan or layout. And number one, I, I tried to figure out how many sixth graders we have that I couldn't find anywhere that said, you know, because we're talking about taking all of the sixth graders out of schools and putting them into uh, elementaries. And, you know, and I was left trying to figure out or find how many, you know, seven and eighth graders that were leaving Hall for the first, in the first place. And uh, how is it going to affect the southern as well as the northern area of schools? That I, I'm still, I mean, I don't know the answer to that. And I think for my, I need to understand that, I know the answers to that, uh, in order to move to the next step where her plan talks about uh, combining uh, Holly and Butler's STEM. Mil so, yes. so let me ask a clarifying question. I have, I have those numbers, actually, well, if you want Hold them. on one second. Yeah. So if the motion that you were about to make, which I, I don't think you made it yet, was just the closure study, can we get that going concurrently to give staff, I would dare say it might be two months because of the holidays, mm. um, get them rolling on that, and then I, I don't know if your intention is to make a motion for the rest of this tonight or if that's coming later. Because I think if it's coming later, then we might can get some more answers to that. Okay, well, let's deal with that part of it because I, I'm still uh, not sure whether we are going to uh, close it or move it. I got you. Okay. And if that makes a difference, I don't know. Uh, I didn't get a satisfactory answer from uh, me. <laughs> So, well, uh, Ms. Ms. Chair, is waiting to do that study stopping us from making some decisions about the K-6, uh, 7, 8, 9, 12 layout that uh, is, has been presented? My opinion would be is you probably would need the study done in order to get information to make informed decisions about that. I'm not, is, is, was that your intention or? I don't, I don't understand your question. Say that again. So he was asking, do we, ask your question again. I'm My sorry. question was, um, we've had some discussions about specific things, but uh, does that discussion preclude us going ahead and making a decision so the community can- Of which steps can, to, to move forward on, you mean, basically? Preclude, um, I lost my thought, uh, pre preclude us from saying this is what we propose to do beginning next year or in the case of the enrichment, depending upon when that would be. But K-6, 7, 8 as it's laid out and the enrichment hub and let people, and, and vote on it, up or down. And so people will know where we are in the process. Well, well I think you would have to, if you're doing sixth seventh and eighth grade changes you would have to do your holly closure study first um yeah so if the process. question is can we move sixth graders out of holly without closing it the answer is yes, yes. 
But if you're moving all the students out of Holly, I would not do that without doing a closure study. Correct. And when, would that, wait, when would that study have to be done? Well, we, we Before can you decide to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if we, if we, Does that make sense? Before, that before. So we, you could do it piecemeal. You could say, okay, today we just want to move sixth graders. I think that you could do that today. Okay. Um, but to say we're going to adopt the whole plan without further study, I, I would okay. not recommend. All right, then I'm going to make a motion that we adopt the K-6 uh, proposal as presented and the high school proposal as presented, and we'll address the middle school issue once we've had our study completed. May I ask a question? Why? Because when we, I was waiting to when we moved to the high schools as to whether we need a study of Granville Central because Granville Central is not closing. Well, so the reason I say that is because are there going to be students who are full time at Granville Central? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so that school is remaining open, yes. just it's being enhanced. Enhanced. Correct. Okay. My yes. question that was asked a little while ago that had to do with the number of sixth graders never got answered. Yes, so um, the current sixth graders at GC Holly are 190, and the current sixth graders at Butner Stem Middle School are 135. And if you take, and then the seventh graders is 154 at Holly and 148 at Butner Stem. So if you take the sixth and seventh grades and we're moved to move them up to seventh and eighth next year, the total enrollment number is 627. The optimal capacity at Butner Stem Middle School is 722, which leaves us with 95 available capacity okay. at Butner Stem Middle School. You're welcome. I looked at it too, and uh, when I looked at the following year to see if it was going to go way up, it went down slightly, but that was with no retentions and no additional people moving in. So it looks like it would stay fairly stable. Mr. Chair, it didn't, did my motion get a second? No. No. no nobody's motion's got a second. <laughs> yeah. Y'all keep jumping in, in front of each other. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So Mr. Peace has got his answer to his number. Are, are, you, are you good with that number answer? Any more clarity you need with that? No, I'm, I'm good with the, that number. Okay. All right. So Dr. Houlihan, your motion is to move forward with the K-6 makeup across the county and the enhancement of Granville Central High School as presented in the plan. And I think I'm allowed to speak first. Yeah, we need to get a second. Yeah, Are we, didn't we get one? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> oh, we didn't. <laughs> All right, do we have a second for that? I, I have a question before we do, do that. Yes, sir. I have a question about the enhancement plan. Okay. That you, that All right, can, we, can we do this? Can we get a second first yeah. to make sure it's gonna go that way and then ask your question? Okay, do we have a second? second it. All right, okay, now ask away. Uh, I just need an explanation as to the, I guess you're talking about the NEO 912 enhancement plan that's in your plan, mm -hmm. right? And I, I mean, I read it, uh, but the questions that occurred to me had to do with uh, staffing and classes. Uh, you can offer, we can offer all the classes uh, that we want to in the advanced courses divisional but unless we have enough students enrolled for that to happen I mean it's happened in the past where we would offer classes but you have five or six or four kids and couldn't afford to offer the class so I'm just my concern is if we do this uh, how different it is from what we actually do now. Kids have an opportunity pretty much to go whatever school they want to go to. Uh, so if I, can I jump in yeah, and ans answer that bit? Okay, <laughs> never mind. Please. Uh, the, the only other thing that I see different from this is there's a place that offers bus, buses to transport students from one place to another. And I just don't want to get ahead of the administration that has to uh, put it, whatever plan we come up with into action. And I think, you know, I don't see anything wrong with the plan, 
It's just that having a plan that you can't implement is not a plan. And I think we need to think about that. I'm finished. Okay. <laughs> I think we'll have to oh. implement it can, as a gradual let, basis. Can, okay, Ms. LeBrick, can you So I just wanted bit? to, yeah, I wanted to speak to that a little bit. Um, so the issue that we have right now is we have three separate schools that offer all different classes and students don't get a chance to combine, right? So they stay at their school through the day and that's the end of it. So I think what I'm thinking is with the Granville Central Enrichment Hub, we have courses that are offered to all, th like, so students at all three schools would be able to come together. So it's not like we have one advanced English at South Granville, we have one advanced English at, and I'm just using this as an example, but if we had advanced English and we had three students that took it at South Granville and we had two students that took it at Granville Central and we had five that took it at, um, at Webb, instead of having three advanced English teachers or whatever the class I just said, um, you've got one teacher teaching 10 students at one school instead of three teachers teaching a handful or like less than a handful well, at the, three the, different the three schools. teachers, the three, they wouldn't be teaching it. If there weren't enough numbers, and it exactly. would not be offered. And right. that's one of our problems. Yeah, exactly. If, if I could respond, uh, oh, no, you, why don't you work? No, go ahead. Um, you know, we as a board have got to decide if we're satisfied with the way things are. And that's no criticism to the staff, but it, are we satisfied? Are we satisfied with not having kids have the same op opportunities in, in, in a AP and those courses, but there are other ones as well. Um, but are we satisfied? Do we take a chance knowing that what we're doing now, in my opinion, is not good enough? And it may not work. The key there is the board passes this policy, it's turned over to the administration to take it and run with it, come back to us with a proposal that we will accept and so on and so forth. But without giving the staff the opportunity to know that this board is behind equity for all kids, that the kids at JF Webb can take the same AP courses as the kids at South Granville <clears throat> or so on and so forth, the arts, um, there are great art teachers out there. I mean, I could go on. My point is, we don't know the answers to a lot of these nuts and bolts questions, nor should we, because it's up to the staff to take what we've got, hopefully put together a major, major committee with partnerships and so on and so forth, to run with it and let their minds go and come back with something that is not more of the same because more of the same will get us exactly where we are now. And once again, that's not a criticism, but we got to think, what's the future going to be like? You talk about Apple and those things, would they, well, anyway, I won't go on and on. Actually, I would, yeah, so for example, um, Apple, something else that I just wanted to bring up there is that um, Apple in Austin invested in training of high school students to prepare them for jobs at the Apple campus in coding using their Swift programming. And Wake Tech has already started um, offering a four-year program. But Apple is looking at high school students to be able to do that kind of thing. Now, who knows if we have that kind of ability at South Granville alone, because you know we might only have like two students that are interested in it, but we may have them at Webb that they've got like 17 kids that are super into that, and we may have like six at Granville Central. And so being able to pull those resources into one location so that all those students are getting the same um, rich education and, and opportunity across the board, I mean, it's really, you're doing nothing, you're, that's where you're looking at it for what's in the best interest of the student, not the minutia of, well, this looks really complicated, I'm just not gonna vote for it. Mr. Chair, I, I, I understand where we're going and conceptually I'm, I'm following you on this. There are a couple of things that I think we need to think about and consider because like Mr. P said, a plan that you can't implement is not really a plan. Um, I know that we've had executive staff members out in schools being substitutes. So to move sixth grade 
down to the elementary level, you would have to create two or three teacher teams at every elementary school, which causes an issue with dual certification. Um, it's hard enough now just to recruit teachers and get them in the building. So if you would just consider, consider this as a thought. What if we move the sixth and seventh grade students to Butner STEM Middle School and move the eighth graders to South Granville? You could house the eighth graders on one wing or one hallway and then you would not have to worry about the dual certification issue with the sixth graders because they would be at a middle school where they could be on four teacher teams. Just as a thought, because I think if we go the path of putting sixth grade back down in elementary school, then you're gonna have to find some teacher who's certified in science and math and another one who's certified in ELA and social studies, and you're gonna have to create these two to three teacher teams, which I think is gonna be difficult or executive staff, they're gonna to have to go out and start teaching some more classes on a regular basis instead of just seven. So just something to consider. I know what we're trying to do with moving the kids. I'd like the idea of, I think somebody, you mentioned video conferencing platform. I agree, for those advanced uh, courses, I think trying to bus them to Granville Central is a logistical nightmare because you have to coordinate scheduling over three high schools and then there's the busing piece. But if we could utilize video conferencing so that I can sit at South Granville and take swift coding at Granville Central, then I'm all for that. That sounds like a great opportunity. Um, I do wonder, though, about the principals at, say, a Webb and a South Granville. If all of my AP and advanced course students are leaving me to go to Granville Central and test, then when it's time to get test results, those results reside with Granville Central, not with South Granville or Webb. I don't think the intent is for everything being offered. Okay. Uh, uh, being, I mean, if there are enough kids for an AP class in history, absolutely they take that at their, at their base school. It's just the idea that if you don't get an opportunity, that you have that option. And um, I don't know about, well, I don't know about the buses, but I do know that uh, as perhaps the administration and staff look around, I think they'll find examples of how that's actually being done. So I'd like to make a comment and then I have a question for you. Um, it, it almost seems like the, the community college way of doing things, which is working, that if a class doesn't have this offered or enough at this campus, then they are moved to another campus or we they, they combine those resources. So. I mean, th that could be a, a place right there just to see an example. My question is, is for your, what you just talked about with eighth grade, are you making a substitute motion? I'm sorry, can I interrupt before you yes. do that? Um, I just want to note, and I was confirming with staff, elementary licensure covers K-6, and then middle school licensure covers 6-9. So an elementary teacher can teach sixth graders. Yeah. Is my, am I correct in saying that? That's correct. Okay. That's okay. <clears throat> So were you making a substitute motion? Well, I, I was hoping that we could have a little bit of discussion around okay. this before we move forward. Just something to consider to throw out there to say, hey, here are a few things that may be sticky points. Well, and to go along with that, now that we got the licensure thing cleared up, um, would it be harder on staff to offer electives and opportunities to sixth graders at elementary schools versus offering electives and opportunities to eighth grade students at South Granville or, or at a high school. Does that make sense to my question? Well, uh, I have a question about the okay. eighth grader thing because I thought that the reason we didn't put eighth grade in with the nine to 12 is because of the SRO issue. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, SROs were not crazy about it. Okay. The parents weren't either. <laughs> but I mean, the reason that we stuck with the traditional model is because of the survey that said they want more traditional approach, and that was specifically not putting middle schoolers in with high schoolers. Okay. So that's that's the only reason I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just want to go back to what I said earlier: is that whatever this board do, I don't want the administration staff to leave here shaking their heads saying, "I don't know how in the heck I'm going to do that." Uh, because that's where the rubber hits the road at. And we need to, 
I, you know, they sort of don't sit around this table, and I, I appreciate that, really. But <laughs> the decisions that we make, we're not going to carry out any of it. Once they leave, you know, us, it goes to them. So, uh, you know, I would appreciate it if we are we making decisions, if we're doing something crazy, if one of them would raise their hands and say, hey, y'all need y'all doing something crazy. <laughs> really. Yep. I want to make a comment okay. when yes, I have a chance. Please. I tell you, my fellow board members, <laughs> I just listened to 39 people talk the other night, <laughs> talking about y'all didn't consider this or y'all didn't consider that or, you know, and they've laid so many things out. All I'm saying here is, Let's not get back into the situation we were in when we met the other night. You know, we have, I said, we have stakeholders. You out there are our stakeholders, as well as this group here, as well as us as board members. You know, I want us to reach consensus, or at least get your input. Now, you know, when we did a survey a couple few months ago, and we asked you for input with regards to consolidating K, you know, consolidating sixth and seventh graders, seventh and eighth graders. And some of you came back and said, I don't think that's a good idea. You know, what I'm saying is, I want to feel that I am getting consensus from everyone. I don't want to put anything on the table and then you all come back with all your emails to me and come and saying, you all didn't think about this. Or why didn't you think about that? And someone said the other night, how about a subcommittee of stakeholders that you all, you know, then we can talk this stuff through. And, you know, I mentioned it to you. I said, I really like some of the things she said, but I'm not sure we're going to go about it that way. I don't think until we make sure we have everybody on board. And I feel we can get the, you know, get our stakeholders on board to do the right thing if we focus on doing what's right for our children. And we just need to do that. And, not put something on the table and vote it, and then next week we got all these emails coming in saying you didn't think about this, you didn't think about this, and here we go again. Yes, ma'am. That's all I'm saying. Dr. Ms. Breck, I, I need to ask Ms. Breck a question. <laughs> you met with a group of stakeholders, if I remember Did? correctly, a few months ago. Yes. Out in your end of the county. Yes. What was their thinking on? the elementary configuration? Um, well, they were pleased to have K-8, to be perfectly frank. Um, but K-6, anything that keeps their kids in elementary schools longer is something that they are happier about. And, and, uh, and I'll go ahead. I'm I was going to say, I just, I mean, so, so, I have to say that I'm getting a bit of whiplash from our board members, which is I'm trying not to take this in a frustrated way. Um, however, only a few months ago did we not get completely railed about not making a decision and that we are wasting money and we are wasting time. And that is why I have taken time to put together this study, because this is not a permanent solution. And I am not saying that we should not have a subcommittee for stakeholders, but I am saying that that, need, that is going to be a long process to make sure that we are getting everybody's input and that we are really, really listening to everything that everybody wants. And I think that there is definitely a place for that. I'm never, I would never say that there isn't. But at the same time, we need to have a plan to move and make some progress and save some money. I mean, as it stands right now, like we are just walking back into the black hole that I was frankly afraid this was potentially going to bring up if we decided not to go down the route that we had decided on on November 1st. And so here we are having a roundtable discussion, picking it apart, trying to put it all together. And I'm, I do not want people to think that you know, oh, this is my baby, like I care so much that, you know, I'm, I'm, my feelings are getting hurt. That is not the case. However, I think that in this plan, I have taken as much as I can from everything that everybody has ever said at one point and, and put it into a comprehensive forward-moving path to help us to save money in the interim until we can find out 
what the numbers say about population. What do our stakeholders really want in the future for their kids? And get us to a place where we can move forward. We are, I'm, I'm freaking out a little bit right here because we are just about to end up where we were three months ago and I'm not, I'm not going there. It's not happening. Because we're going to, I mean, we're going to be, the county commissioners are going to go, oh, look at that board. They still can't make a decision. Awesome. Well, just about anything we do is going to have some kinks, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, but I put myself in the place right now of a parent, and I'm thinking about what do I want to do with my child next year. Mm -hmm. And before we can turn around good, uh, people are going to be making decisions. Do they want to keep their child at their elementary school? Do they want to move them to a different setting or what? And I think it would be helpful if we made a decision, like you say, it is temporary, uh, and go with it. Now, fifth and sixth grade, uh, I had 34 of them in a combination class, so I know you can teach both of them at the same time. But I do know curriculums have changed, but we still have certification issues, even when it's all like we have it now. So I guess that's something we'll have to deal with constantly anyway. Well, and that's, that's the other thing to take into consideration. The, the, the sooner that we are able to consolidate, especially in our middle schools, and you know, take some of that burden off of our teachers, the less we're gonna have executive staff in the classroom. I mean, we need to consolidate in some fashion. So, I don't know, see, I, and, and that's where I'm prepared to make this, the, the, um, the motion of, moving forward with the temporary solution because that's what this is this is not permanent this is not we, permanent we we've got a motion on the floor yeah to, to move forward k6 Definitely. in the high school and, and, and the reason for that particular motion is that we get off the table now tonight this um you know what are we going to do next year and i know k6 may not work for some people but i sure know k5 isn't enough for some people and I'm not sure we will ever have a clear mandate to go one way or the other. The one thing about making our schools K-6 that we are overlooking is the need for students to help fill our buildings. And in the elementary level, and especially in the northern part of the county, uh, uh, enrollment is changing and we need to um, address that. Uh, so uh, there is no K6, K8, K7, K2. There is no good answer one way or the other. And I just think the people deserve to know something concrete tonight. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think, I mean, I, I hear two things being on the table, really. The one that we've already decided, and that's the rescind the one that is out there now. That's going to take care of that part of it. Now, the other thing that uh, Ms. LeBrecht talked about was like a three-part deal. She had elementary, middle, and high school. Now, the idea that K-6, you know, I, my initial concern was the number of sixth graders that we were going to be moving to elementary schools if we went that route. Now, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I can see having a uh, K-6 throughout the entire county. Uh, the middle school I'm concerned about, but I can live with. High school, there's too many ifs that, you know, we got a right now, five, 10 year plan, and, and I'm, I just can't get my arms around all that at this point. Uh, and that's sort of where I am. I mean, if we want to leave here tonight knowing with the administration, knowing that there are some things that can be worked on, then I feel like we're moving forward. Uh, and I think your motion addressed some of that, <laughs> but I can't uh, live with all of it that you talked sure. about. Sure. Basically. So, so I have a question about your high school idea. Yes. Is that not programmatic? programmatic anyway that that's really not our realm right 
Right. That, that should be the administration to begin with. Exactly. So yeah. We are starting we to bog, re- we're starting to bog ourselves down into the minutiae yeah. of which yeah. I'm not qualified and I <laughs> I'll be I'm happy to admit that. I mean, I was I'm not an education major. I, mean, I don't I think know they've that heard that we want to look for a solution to be able to offer some advanced courses and and there's an idea. I know we have the USDA grant that we received last year that specifically wraps around teleconferencing equipment, that kind of thing. So I almost wonder, do we pull the high school part out because it's not a policy decision? The staff has heard it. They have the freedom to go work on it with our, they have the expectation that we want something in that. The K-6 is more of a policy decision, would just be a question I have. Um, That's a good question as far as as a high school uh, idea. Um, the, the policy part of that would be that we are proposing a alternative way of, of meeting the needs of all children. The administration takes it from there and figures in out. terms of de- details. And, you know, they come back with some ideas. It could be that we may need to implement it a year after whatever. So I, it's, it's a chance just to really um, look at what we're doing how we're meeting the needs of kids, and what, if anything, we can do to help resolve that. Eventually, I would think that it would come back to the board for approval, but I'm, propo- I'm proposing, uh, my thing is that it's a policy thing related to alternative ways of meeting the needs of children. Mr. Chair? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd- just because there's been a lot of questions about whether to vote on things. So Dr. Houlihan has made a motion that has two parts, but in one motion. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the motion that's on the floor. There, it, if anybody wants to make a subsidiary motion to divide it into two votes, you can do that. Or, or you can make a friendly request that he do it, or, but there is such a subsidiary motion that you can ask to divide the original motion into two parts and consider them separately. Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion around the motion that's on the floor? Could you please restate that? I will. So Dr. Uh, Houlihan is requesting that we move forward with, make sure I get my wording correct. You have this in here somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so the motion is to move forward with making all elementary schools K-6 across the entire county including intramural sports league for sixth graders across the district. The motion also includes that we um, designate Granville Central High School as a 912 enrichment hub for all students district-wide to attend their advanced courses and additional electives. Um, and we're allowing the staff to be able to determine how that will occur. Is that correct? Uh, not quite. I okay. think the motion would be the that the concept, concept of an enrichment hub uh, for, at, focused at uh, Granville Central High School is the motion. Okay. Buses, right. everything else, uh, the, the, the um, administration can come back to us and say, hey, we can't get this together or whatever, but th- it's just that very small slice of it. Okay, all right. So K-6 across all the, the county and that uh, we use the concept of an enrichment center uh, at Granville Central High School as an idea for the executive staff to work through. Did your motion include seventh eighth grade? Uh, we yeah. can't do that we, yet because of the, of right. the closure. So, so as yeah. it stands, there would be, but to be clear, it does mean that there would be no sixth graders at Northern Granville or Butner STEM either. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? All right. If you're ready to vote. Question. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Yeah, I just want to make sure I understand this for the for the K-6. And you did say across the entire county. Yes. So we're talking about all of the elementary schools, um, no matter what district they're in, the north side, south side, and include intramural sports league for sixth graders across the district. The now, whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. Okay. 
I guess I probably should have and, put county, then, not district. And then again, that is something that, of course, would be left then to the staff to, yeah, and just like you said, Dr. Hulihan, with regards to the concept for the high school. Yes. And this would be the same. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Is my question then, just like you said, with as far as the concept, we are pretty sure the staff can make this happen. I just don't want, <laughs> when you went there, see this, first time seeing it, and just like with the high school, uh, that they might come back and say, well, you know, it, would that be a concept as well? That way they could look at both and say, hey, we can do this. Or, you know what I'm saying? I sure do. Um, or we are saying, do it, you know, versus look at this well, concept. It's, it's, you it's, can it's, make it's a policy decision in terms of K-6. Right. Um, and that's kind of the board's, uh, board's uh, purview. purview or responsibility. Okay. Um, now, certainly, it goes without saying that if the uh, staff gets into it and finds some things that, that are, we need to consider, right. I think we have a, a good enough relationship with them that they would come forward. True. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Are you ready to vote? All right. Ms. Williams? Yes. Dr. McKnight? Yes, ma'am. It, it isn't, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it is important to know it's probably just impact of choice at some of our schools, and we just need to know that. Yeah. Yeah. Impact of choice. Yeah. Do you want to expound on that? Just can I could hear. you come to a mic and expound on that? You want me to say? Yeah. So, Dr. McLean and I were discussing um, most of our schools certainly have enough surplus capacity for the current fifth graders to just stay at their school for sixth grade right. next year. There could be some of our campuses where um, the capacity might start to get tight, which is a good thing, but let's not forget that many of our students in elementary schools choose to go to those schools. And our, the way our transfer policy reads is that you can only go to a choice program if there is space. Right. So this potentially could impact the, the choice programs um, without having the, the numbers to dive into specifically. It's just, it's a possibility. We just, did not, we just did not want to not say that right up front. Um, and we may have to bring some adjustment to our transfer policy as it relates sure. to the choice decision. Absolutely. We don't know details at this point. Like you said, we've just seen it, but that's something that just comes to mind Absolutely. because all of our schools are choice schools at this point. Yes, all right. Um, so just with that new piece of information, I want to start back. Are you still yes? Yes. Okay. Dr. McKnight? I'm going to say yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Okay. Dr. Houlihan? Yes. Mr. Peace? Uh, I want to do elementary stop. Okay, so the attorney said that there could be a subsidiary well, motion. It is too late for that now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Ms. LeBrick? Yes. All right. I vote yes. It passes seven to zero. All right. Next order of business. Um, would that be the closure study of Holly if you're wanting to, to move middle school? Yes, I would like to make a motion that we proceed with the closure study of uh, GC Holly Middle School with the intent on moving the seventh and eighth graders to Butner STEM Middle School. Okay. All right, do we have a second? Second. All right. Uh, what discussion do you have? My discussion with regards to that, okay, uh, with the study, of, of Holly with the intent of moving, you know, the seventh and eighth graders and then to Butner STEM, uh, was well, C.G. Holly and Butner STEM. So I understand about the study, you know, and we at first say it just have a study anyway, but with the intent of doing this, 
is basically what, as a result of the study, it can be done based on the cost, 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 and or if when the study comes back, there is still a at that point, a decision to be made. Yes, ma'am. So the, sure. the study will be like it has traditionally been, right. give you the background information of the school, right. give you cost comparisons, sizing for what's mm -hmm. being proposed. Would there be space to allow for that? Uh, any kind of uh, transportation issues, all of those kind of things. Yes, ma'am. It would follow all that. Then it would have to come back to the board as a draft. We would uh, ask for edits. There would be a final. We'd schedule a public hearing. And then at that point, there would be the opportunity after the public hearing for the board members to make motions related around that school, which could be what Ms. Lebrecht has proposed at that point. And keeping in mind that, again, holidays probably two months out for a study. Yeah, I will note Is that. Is that fair to say about two months? Some of those things, like presentation of the final study and public hearing, could happen on the same night. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Other questions or discussion? Okay. Seeing none, if you're ready to vote. Ms. Williams? Yes. Dr. McKnight? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Houlihan? Yes. Mr. Peace? Yes. Ms. Lebrecht? Yes. I vote yes, so that passes seven to zero. Are there other motions to come to the floor tonight related to consolidation? All right, any further comments? Ms. Uh, what we'll do is go around just real quickly if you wanna make a, a closing kind of comment, Ms. Williams. Um, I would just like to say uh, thank everybody for having this hearing, um, I think with the uncertainty with SWASA and all of the subdivisions, I think the temporary solution is the best solution because we don't have a crystal ball. And if we close something like a high school, it's hard to unclose it. And I think we can continue to think outside the box and come up with some really good ideas. And I know our staff and administration has that ability, so we're we're counting on them to do that. Thank you. Dr. McKnight? I'd just like to say, I think it's a, this is a, a good stopgap measure. And uh, I appreciate you for putting some thought into this and laying it out for us. But thank you. Okay. Ms. Anderson? Yes, again, I do want to thank um, everyone with where we're headed. You know, of course, just like Ms. LeBrecht said, you know, we don't want to stand still again or go backwards or as I've been saying for a while, going around in circles here, but we also want to do the right thing for our students. And I have to admit, you know, when, when the speakers and presenters talked about the mental health of students and what's in the best interest of students, I want to make sure that our stakeholders, our parents, and our community, and everything that, you know, when you came out and talked the other night, you know, it was great because you could tell this was a community effort. And we just want to make everyone feel that they're, they have a community that they need to support, not just on the Creekmore side, but we have so many more school districts that have to have that same community effort. And I think we're going to move in this direction, making sure that we hear from everyone, everyone. So I think we're beginning to move that way. Thank you. Dr. Houlihan? Yeah, I want to begin by uh, saying thank you to you, David, uh, for that, I'm sure, difficult decision to uh, rescind the, mo to rescind the, the decision. Um, I know that wasn't easy. I know you were supporting it, but I, I, I admire the fact that you, you listened to the community. You got their input, and um, just thank you for doing that. It took a lot of heart. Uh, heartburn off the table. And uh, Ms. Lebrecht, you too, for putting this together. Uh, it's, we just have been talking in circles for, for whatever, and maybe the timing was right uh, to, to bring this forward, but at least parents now know that next year their children will be in K-6 schools, and a decision will be made shortly about middle school, and the decision has been made about high schools. And I think that finally, 
we, even though it's stopped yet, finally we can hold our heads up and move forward that we have met most of our required obligations. Um, thank goodness. So, thanks. Mr. Peace? Uh, just to thank all of the board members for the hard work that they that we put in to get to where we are and uh, it's most appreciated. Ms. Labrick. Um, thank you to all of you um, on the board for your support and um, listening to my ranting and craziness <laughs> half the time. Um, but also thank you to all of our stakeholders, parents, kids. I'm always so impressed with how articulate our students are whenever they come up and speak. Um, it's not something that I would have ever been comfortable with as a high schooler, so it's always really impressive to me when we have such eloquent speakers at such a young age. Um, and I think this is also a really good lesson for those kids. I mean, so often today in society we wonder, do we really have power over anything? And so I think it, we made the right decision in listening to them and showing them that, you know, when you do present a strong case and you do fight for what you want, it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. So, thanks. Thank you. Um, I'd like to remind the board that just with these decisions, um, I, I've, I've always kind of come back to, to this point. Uh, in a few months, our finance uh, superintendent will be standing in front of us with a budget. And so it'll be hard work for us to make sure that we're ready for that. And it's going to require some belt tightening and some creative thinking. Uh, she and I had a conversation uh, yesterday of just how we can think outside of the box to make this work. And um, so just remember that when budget time comes around. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for the ability that we can come back to the table and make positive moves for our district. Um, I, I have never professed to be the smartest person at any table I've ever sat at, but I know a lot of smart people that sit around tables with me. So uh, being able for us to come together and be able to do that. One of the things that you uh, kind of hit on just a second ago is I think uh, unintended consequences was a word we heard a lot about. Uh, one of the unintended consequences of the last month and a half has been a real life civics lesson for our students and for our parents and for some of us sometimes. And so uh, I'm very thankful to have watched our students in the way they have handled themselves uh, for the most part and for our educators who have strove in strived to continue to teach and do well in our classrooms. Uh, I just want to thank our executive staff for uh, hanging in there with us and, and being there for every time we have asked for something more. And just thank you. And to our educators uh, that you have hung in there with us and that uh, we have really wanted to make Granville County the best place it could be. And uh, our educators help us do that. And families that are sticking with us, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to serve you and to give us the, the grace and the ability to be able to, to come back to the table uh, and make corrections when we need to and learn things when we hear from you and just uh, to be able to serve you better. Um, Madam Superintendent, is there anything you'd like to say? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to add and echo what absolutely everyone has said this evening. No matter what district, this has to be the most difficult work of any board. And I commend each and every one of you for coming in here tonight, making some of the toughest decisions uh, that had to be made so that I can honestly say this will not be on Monday night's agenda. <laughs> so, <laughs> we will actually on Monday night get to talk about some other things uh, because it is the holiday season. And while this was most important work, it really is most important work, there are some incredible things still occurring in this school district. So thank you for this because now that these decisions have been made, it allows this staff and I to take these marching orders and go on and do some work for you. And we're happy to bring the, the decisions, some, some questions, some updates, and work back to you for some additional work from here. To the audience of parents and friends and community members, thank you for coming this evening. And thank you for going on this journey. Again, just difficult work. 
and this community of parents and grandparents and guests and friends, and I have to say, and most importantly, the students. Mm -hmm. It's just been incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. You know, the system of democracy is one where everyone has a voice. And one of the things I absolutely enjoy about this process is getting to hear from everyone, but especially our young people and teaching them how to advocate. So thank you to everyone, but especially our young people. They were wonderful. They were wonderful, and so were each of you. So Mr. Chair, thank you. I look forward to seeing everyone on Monday evening. We do have a board meeting at 6 p.m. Monday evening. Yes, ma'am. That, that is our next date. Please make sure that you are prepared for that. And with that, if there's nothing else from board members, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. <laughs> Y'all aren't excited, are you? Thank you, everyone. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion, we're adjourned.